Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to cut out a product with the pen tool, all in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see I've opened up an image of some cars and some blocks, some toys, lots of fun stuff. And we're going to be cutting out one of these cars at the front, specifically this one. And we're going to be doing that using the pen tool. So we can select the pen tool from the toolbar on the left and we've got a few options at the top across here. Now at the moment this is set to shape. So if I try and draw a shape, very similar to Illustrator, it will create a vector shape with the fill color or the stroke or all of these properties that I've selected. So we can go to edit and step backwards a few times just to undo that. And we're going to select instead path. Now what this does is it draws a work path that we can use. You can't see this if you were to export this now. So this is something that you can only use within Photoshop, but we can use this to make selections and save selections. So with the pen tool selected, we're going to zoom in on this blue car on the right. And you can also press the cap locks key to switch from the pen icon to a crosshairs. This is something that I find just a little bit more accurate and it's always a good idea to zoom in as much as you can. So if you've never used the pen tool before, you start by left clicking and then you can either left click to draw a straight line or you can left click and hold and drag out a curve. So there's a very, very slight curve here. And what Photoshop will want to do if you draw a curve is it will want to naturally continue that curve. And this is incredibly useful for drawing nice, smooth curves with the pen tool. However, sometimes you don't want to draw a curve. So what you can do is hold down Alt and just click on this anchor point and it will cut that. And then you can follow up with a straight one instead of the forced curve one. So we can now just curve this around. And of course, again, we don't want to follow up with a curve, something like that. We want to hold Alt, click on the anchor point and it cuts it. And then we can follow up here with a straight one. So it just depends on the object that you're cutting out and the type of curves that you want. So let's just bring this up. So you can see here we've got this green in the background. Now we really don't want to include that. So it's definitely worth zooming in and you want to get your pen tool lines, your paths as on the mark as you can. So you can see that's pretty good. It's always better though to just cut into the product a little bit rather than going outside because you can see if I were to pen tool this and it's outside, I'm going to get this green caught in my selection and it's going to have this like green halo effect. So if you if you can't get it exactly on the money, just go a little bit inside and that's fine. We're going to feather that edge later in the tutorial anyway. So we'll draw a nice little curve around here, alt click. And it takes a bit of practice if you've never used the pen tool before. So I can continue that curve there like so. Nice big one here. So the more you use the pen tool, the more you will get a feel for it. And it behaves very similarly to something like Illustrator that you can use to draw custom shapes. And to be honest, once you understand it in one program, you'll be using it across all the other Adobe products because they all function very, very similarly. So it's definitely worth learning. So here we've got this kind of very uh, specular highlight on the product. It's very bright. I'm just going to have to guess that edge because I can't really see it. And I'm just going to go around the rest of this product and just finish this cutout. So there we go, we've pen tooled around our entire product and we can see that there. And if you go to the paths panel over on the right, or if you don't see that, just go to window down to paths. You can see that listed as a work path. Now, if you start pen tooling lots of other stuff and cutting out other shapes, then that work path that you can see here could be replaced and you could lose that. So what I'd recommend is double clicking on the text and then you can give this a custom name click OK, and it will then save this. In fact, at the bottom of the paths panel, you've got some other options like adding masks, adding new paths or new layers, and it functions very similarly to the layers panel. So you can add lots and lots of paths for each object that you're cutting out within your scene. 
So we've now got the car selected and we can hold command or control depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC and click on this one and then you'll get the marching ants appear and we can make a selection from that. Or we can switch back to layers and with the path selected in the paths panel, we can grab the pen tool, right click and we've got lots of other options here as well, but we can also make a selection and we could add a slight feather on this as well. So if we add zero, this will be a clean cut selection and we'll have a very hard edge. But of course, because this is a photo, we do have some blur around the edge. And if we feather this ever so slightly, something like three pixels, it will give us a softer edge. Now, depending on the size of your image, you might need to tr do a bit of trial and error here and adjust the amount of feathering to get something that you like. And we'll leave anti-alias checked and click OK. So we now get our marching ants for our selection and we've got three pixels of feathering on there as well. So I could just create a new layer, grab the paint bucket tool, fill that in, and you can see there what that three pixels feather looks like. And if you want to deselect your marching ant selection, just go to select and down to deselect. So we can delete this layer now because we don't actually need that. That's just a test. And I can then go back to the paths panel, hold command or control on the thumbnail, left click. And now I've got that selection. And from there, I can click the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And it will add this as a mask and we now have a transparent background. And I'm going to double click on the layer and we'll just call this car. Next, what I'm going to do is go to the bottom of the layers panel again, and this time click the adjustment icon and we're going to add a solid color. And we'll just pick any color for now, it really doesn't matter. And we can click okay and we'll drag this underneath. And then we're going to go to the adjustment icon again. And this time we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to bump up the lightness to maximum at the moment. And with the mask selected on this adjustment layer, we're going to left click and hold on the paint bucket tool, select the gradient tool, and just make sure we've got that default black to white gradient selected because of course we are working on the mask here. Make sure that you've got the second one along selected as well. That's a radial gradient. So this will emanate from or towards the center. And we'll just zoom back out and we could left click in the center of the canvas and drag out to the edge and it will create a gradient. Now, if your gradient doesn't look like this, just check the reverse box at the top and it will go the other way. So that's a really quick way to flip the direction around. And the great thing about having a radial gradient set up on a hue and saturation adjustment layer is we can now double click on the color fill adjustment layer on that thumbnail and we can adjust the color and regardless of what color we pick we're going to get that same highlight in there and it's all going to work together seamlessly and similarly we can also double click on the hue and saturation thumbnail and we can adjust that lightness so we can adjust that little highlight in the middle that glow there as we need to so what i'm going to do for this tutorial is double click on that color fill layer again and just use the eyedropper tool to pick something from the image. So we've got some green on the wheels. We can adjust this here. Uh, we could go for blue perhaps. I think I'll probably go for blue. Maybe just bump this up so it's a bit more punchy. And click OK. But remember we've got full flexibility over this so we can change either of these if we need to. And I'm gonna double click this and just call this background color and then call this highlight just so we don't get confused next I'm going to select the car layer right click and select duplicate layer and I'm going to call this duplicate shadow and just drag this underneath now if I switch off the main car layer what I'm going to do here is right click on the layer mask for shadow and delete it and this gives us back our original image now we are going to add a layer mask, but we're going to hold the Alt key on the keyboard and then add this layer mask. And what it does is it will add the layer mask and it'll be completely black, which of course black hides whatever's on that layer, and white will show it. So it completely hides that layer. And next we're going to grab white as our foreground color and our brush tool. And we're going to use 
want a Photoshop soft, round, pressure opacity brushes. So something with a hardness of 0%. Let's just find where it is. Okay, so we want the shadow. Just edit and undo. And we're now just going to brush over anywhere that has a shadow. So we could look at this and recreate our own shadow, but seeing as we have a, an authentic, real shadow here, we may as well use this. At least as a starting point, then we can build on it if we need to. So that's pretty good. I've got the wheels in there, part of the car, and this bit over here. So we can just select black now, and just go back in and refine that. So remember, black removes from the mask, white paints it back in. And you can press X on the keyboard to quickly switch between those two colors. And this is a much more non-destructive way of working. So we've got full flexibility. In fact, if we hold down shift and click on the layer mask, it brings back our entire image. And we can drag that mask to the trash if we want to. So masks, amazing way of working. So let's just tighten up this shadow. We don't need to worry about the white too much because if we then go to the blending mode and change that from normal to multiply, it will blend that white and those lighter colors into the background. So what we can do now is switch on our car layer and we've then taken that shadow and we've got that underneath the car. And we can go in and refine this a bit further now. So you can see I've got these, these lines here. I'm just gonna use a really soft brush just to brush into a little bit more of that. And if you wanted to adjust the opacity of the shadow and make it less pronounced, you could do if you wanted. I'm gonna leave that as it is for now. Well, there's something I have noticed is that we have this blue background now. The shadow looks quite green from the original image. So we're going to go to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the adjustment icon again and select hue and saturation. Now you can adjust the hue slider here However, you will see that it does affect everything, everything below this adjustment layer. So we need to click this icon at the bottom and it will create this as a clipping mask. So you can see the arrow here points to the layer below. The layer below is underlined and this means that this hue and saturation adjustment layer only affects the layer below it. And because we have a blue background, I'm just gonna select colorize and then I can scrub through the hue slider here, find a similar light blue color and just adjust the saturation and the lightness as I need to. Probably something like this. And then you can see I've changed the color of that shadow. And you can go and tinker with that a little bit or you can drop that opacity down and find something like 80% if you want. So it's still got a little bit of green coming through from the wheels as well. And now I think it's time we probably make this car a bit bigger because you can see it's still quite small. We've got this lovely highlight in the middle. So if we just select the car layer, hold shift and select the shadow layer and we'll capture everything in between. Go to edit, free transform. Of course the transform is quite large because we've captured the hue and saturation adjustment layer which is the size of the entire canvas. So we can scale this up holding alt and shift and just position the car in the center, so resize that. And just press enter or double click to set that transformation. And something else that I've just noticed is we have this kind of, this bit of fringing here around the edge, which we don't really want. It's kind of like an outline. Sometimes you do just get this with the pen tool because we're cutting out an object from one scene with a particular type of lighting and we've just dropped it onto a plain background. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to tidy that up but we can use our mask. So we can select the mask for car and go to select, select a mask. And what we could do now is we can just maybe bump up the feather a little bit, but more importantly, just bring that shift edge down. And what that will do is it will shift the edge of our path inwards. We could drag it up and it will increase it. We don't really want to do that though. We want to decrease it. So it just cuts into that little bit and you can adjust the feather and you could smooth out your path a little bit if you wanted to. But if I click OK and just undo and redo, you can see that that has made quite a difference. Now it has left the wheels a little bit out of line here with the shadow. So what we're going to do is just click on the shadow and depending on your image, this may or may not work. We're just going to nudge shadow up a little bit. 
So I've just moved it from there to there. And you can go and tinker around with this a little bit as much as you need to. And you've still got these masks for the car and the shadow. So you can go in there and you can tidy up some of these lines, some of the bits like this if you want to. And it's definitely worth spending as much time as you need to just to get it looking really, really good. Now, because the car in the original image was quite small, if I zoom in, I've got quite a lot of noise. So I'm actually just going to select the car layer, go to filter, down to noise and select reduce noise. Now, depending on your image, you might not have this much noise, but this is just a really, really handy tip. If you do have noise and you want to reduce it, you can just play around with the settings here and just scrub around in the preview, although I'm not entirely sure where my car is in the preview. There it is. So we could just zoom in there. So we can see that noise and we can adjust the strength and then see how it's going to change that. So with the strength slider and these preserve detail slider, it's really a balance of doing just that, reducing some of the noise and preserving some of the details. So you can tinker around with all these settings and see your preview change in real time. When you're happy, click OK. And there we go, we've reduced some of the noise. So if we zoom back out now, on the original image we have these highlights here across the top. So this suggests that the light source lighting this scene, this object, is coming from above. At the moment we have this glow around the whole product, which might be what you're going for. However, if I click on the highlight mask again, I'm going to go back to the gradient tool and use this same radial gradient and I'm going to start up here. So where the light source is coming from and you may need to do this a few times and just try dragging at different lengths. There we go. So now the light source is up here and this just feels a little bit more authentic like the lights on the product relate to the scene that it's in as well. And one last thing that I'm going to do to this entire scene is just select the topmost layer, go to the adjustment icon and just add a curves adjustment layer. And just make a couple of points on this line and just bring this down. And this is just going to help really increase that contrast a little bit. So we get a little bit of a bend in this line. You can of course adjust this as much or as little as you like. And I can click the eye at the bottom of this panel to just preview the original and how it looks now. And I think that about wraps up this tutorial. So we've cut out a toy car using the pen tool and we've applied loads of different effects to help this fit within our scene. And there we go. That was how to cut out a product with the pen tool all in Photoshop. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.